So, uh, in this lab uh, what we will be teaching about you uh, would be on how to interface sensors and actuators uh, with Arduino. Now, you, you already have used Arduino for people who do not know what is Arduino we will be discussing about that particular board and you will be looking at how we can uh, actu uh, we can interface these actuators with those particular board, how can uh, uh, interface the sensors with the Arduino board and uh, uh, this is like a, a practical class. So, uh, you know and, and Arjun uh, who is my teaching assistant uh, will be taking this class. So, uh, learn about it like I am sure that lot of uh, universities uh, and colleges they, they teach Arduino uh, uh, as a part of their experimental exercise. Uh, particularly for electronics uh, students. So, but if you still do not have uh, idea it is fine uh, use this lab as an uh, practice lab for understanding how can you interface uh, several sensor actuators with the Arduino board right. I uh, will see you in the next lab class uh, till then you take care bye. Hi uh, I am Arjun a TA for the course sensors and actuators. So, um, so, we will be having a small tutorial on how to use an Arduino board and that is that is a microcontroller which can be used to interface our sensors as well as control our actuators that we have discussed earlier. Okay. So, an Arduino board is nothing but a microcontroller which can be programmed it is a development board basically. So, we will be seeing how an Arduino board is used uh, the features that we can utilize as well as the Arduino IDE the software platform that we use to control the Arduino. Okay, so, we will have a look into it. Uh, so, uh, now we will be seeing a Arduino board. So, in the previous lectures we must have discussed about Ar different types of Arduino. So, uh, you must have heard of Arduino Uno, Mega, Arduino Nano and other boards. So, what you see here is a Arduino Mega board. So, you can see here it is written Arduino uh, Mega 2560. Okay. So, uh, there are different boards basically like either the capacity changes or the number of pins or size varies according to the applications. So, what we have here is an Arduino mega board. Okay. Arduino mega board has 54 digital pins, digital input output pins. So, we can take both uh, inputs as well as outputs via these digital pins. Also, we have uh, 16 analog pins also. So, using these analog pins over there we can actually uh, take analog inputs ok analog inputs and also use them as digital outputs also ok. Also we have 16 uh, PWM pins among these digital pins which can be utilized uh, to control the speed of motor other and other things ok. You can also see the Admega 2560 IC which controls the Arduino board it becomes the brain of the Arduino board ok. So, um, Arduino um, Mega has a major difference between uh, compared to Arduino Uno. It has 4 UART ports uh, like uh, for, for Arduino Uno we can take uh, TXRX from one set of them while we have 4 of them for communication serial communication ok. Now, you can see a power jack over uh, there in the Mega where we can power it up ok. You can provide up to 15 volts. We, it already has a voltage regulator and a current regulator inside it, but a safe operating voltage is 9 to 12 volt. So, it is better to keep it that way. You can uh, the Arduino to uh, mega works at 16 megahertz and you can see the crystal oscillator over here ok. So, these are the basic constructional things of the Arduino mega it also has some uh, 5 volt 3.3 and ground pins which we can utilize for uh, small small LEDs and other things that we are going to show you. Okay. So, uh, now I am going to connect the uh, Arduino Mega to the my laptop. This symbol over here is for the, the shortcut for Arduino IDE. So, Arduino IDE is the tool that we will be using to program the Arduino Mega or you know or any of the Arduino boards. Okay. So, I am opening it. So, if this is the genuine software that is the Arduino Genuino. Okay. So, this is how it will come it is a sketch. So, this is the window of the Arduino IDE where we will be doing the programming. So, the programming language over here is uh, based on embedded C. So, it is not the pure embedded C, but a Arduino variant, but uh, if you have a logic in Arduino um, 
the embedded C or C++, you will be, uh, it will be very easy for you to catch up with it. Okay, now you can see, I will just uh, erase the phone. Okay, so you can see here. So uh, uh, by default, there are like two functions over here. You will be familiar with functions and other things. So there is one void setup here and one void loop here. So why by default there are two functions over here? So this is because uh, like consider we are doing some experiment, okay? So there will be some initial setup or uh, we have to set up a facility or a lot of equipment or the things that or the things that we have to do the experiment with. So this there will be a setup process before any experiment, right? So this void setup function is something similar to that. So this setup or the setting up process will only happen once during an experiment. So similarly, in Arduino also, this void setup runs only once. So this setup function will be the place where we will be doing all sort of initial arrangements and other things. I will let you know like uh, what kind of things are those. For example, like uh, I have already told you like there are digital pins, there are analog pins, there are uh, PWMs, we can generate PWM signals and a lot of things like that. Also, we will be able to transfer data serially. So all those uh, facilities are there with the Arduino board. So in the void setup, what we do is actually, we will say that a digital pin uh, can, is going to be used as an input or as an output. Similarly, if we are using an analog pin as an input or output, well, like similarly, all the setup process comes under the void setup over here. And then there is void loop. So once we uh, start the uh, any experiment, what we do is like we might do multiple iterations with a multiple change of cases and other things. So that process repeats over and over. Similarly, in the Arduino also, we have a void loop that repeats over uh, the entire duration of the runtime. Uh, as long as the Arduino is powered up, okay. So there are two main uh, functions in the Arduino IDE. One is void setup and one is void loop. Okay, now we will do some uh, sample codes and see how it is implemented in the Arduino. So one of the uh, most common uh, examples is a bling program. So you can see over here, I'm taking a bling code. Okay, you can see here in, uh, in the file menu, there are examples. A lot of examples will be there. Once you, uh, Arduino has uh, support from a, a lot of libraries uh, because a lot of developers use Arduino. So you can see different, different other drivers and other things are interfaced with Arduino. And once you install the libraries, you will get examples for all. So I am just taking an example of basics and Blink. So I am going to show you how uh, a, LED can be blinked using an Arduino program. Okay, so you can see here in the void setup, we are defining uh, pin mode LED built-in comma output. Okay, so it means that LED built-in here is a variable. Okay, so uh, in Arduino Mega, it's understood that it's uh, Arduino's, in usual Arduino's, LED built-in is connected to pin number 13, digital pin number 13. But to avoid confusion, I'm going to put say 13. So since if you are not aware about that, I'm just converting it to 13. So it says that, so this is how it works in a void setup, okay. So there is pin mode 13 comma output. This means that the 13th pin, the 13th digital pin is an output pin. So if we change this to input, it, uh, input, it means that uh, the 13th pin is a input now. So this is what we set up inside the void setup function, okay. So right now I am putting this as the 13th pin as output, okay. And what you see here is the void loop. So these are the one of the functions that like you can see digital write 13 comma high. So this is the fun uh, one of the functions that we use to control the digital pins, okay. So the digital write uh, command is used to tell the Arduino that uh, when this command is being called or this function is being called, make the 13th pin high. So you know it's a uh, digital pin, so it has only low, two states, either high or low. So when this command or function is being called, it will 
automatically make the pin state the pin that is referred here high or low depending upon what comes over here you can see a similar line here digital right 13 comma low okay so this is basically like make the led that is connected to the 13th pin on and this is to make the pin uh, led off and you can see a delay function here which is a common function we use so delay is used to delay the code run for a while so the loop, void loop will be running infinitely uh, like a um, infinite for loop or while loop so in between if you want to delay or something you can uh, put a delay like this and whatever number that comes in the, the braces are in micro uh, milliseconds okay so thousand means it's one second so uh, what this code will do is initially it will make uh, assign the 13th pin as an output then after that it will start running into the void loop for infinitely and the first step it will do is it will make the 13th pin high so i am going to connect a Arduino, uh, led to the arduino board and pin number 13 and also in series i am connecting a resistor also to prevent um, it from uh, getting damaged since the high in the uh, high state of the arduino is 5 volt which is not desirable for the led for a long time okay so what we essentially want after this program is uh, the 13th pin will be high that means the led will glow it will stay uh, stay like that or uh, it will glow for one second after that that led will turn off for one second again the void loop repeats itself so it will be like a led blinking at an interval of one second okay this is how the code works and you can see multiple buttons over here you, you can set the uh, you have a lot of options over here like increase the uh, font size and other things also uh, in the sketch you can see the commands compile upload and other things also there are button here this is the compile button so once you have done the code you can just press this tick button and you will show the progress bar here and it will be written done compiling if there is no errors and if you press this button it will the code will be uploaded to the arduino board so in the tools you have to note this one very important so you have to select the board so since i have connected an arduino mega i have to choose under this board as mega if it was a uno you have just uh, select uno it's mega so we are selecting mega 2560 and also you will have to uh, select the com port so since only one arduino is connected now it's showing com port 11 only so i have selected that so these are the important steps that you have to make sure you have done it before you upload the code okay so now i am going to upload the code so once i start uploading the code you will see that the data has been transferred to the uh, arduino and it will be start um, the uh, rx and tx the receiver and transmitter leds will be starting to blink showing that the code is being uploaded after the code being uploaded the led attached the pin 13 will also start blinking at the interval of one seconds so i am going to press this button so as you can see since i uploaded the code oh it uh, blinked uh, very fast the rx and tx pins over there uh, leds over there so i will just show once again show it for you to show that the rx and tx are blinking very fast you can see that red leds that blink very fast so it means that the code being uploaded now uh, you can see that white led that is connected to the pin number 13 is blinking at the rate of one seconds okay it's turning uh, on and off at an interval of one second also you can see a red led in arduino also being uh, blinking at the same rate at the same time so since i have already mentioned that the built-in led in arduino mega is connected to the pin number 13 and we have used the same pin so both leds are being blinking okay so that's how a digital write command or how we will uh, this is how we will be giving a digital output in arduino mega or any of the arduino boards okay now we will see some other functionalities also now i am going to show you another example so we have seen how we send out our digital outputs through arduino mega now i am going to show another example how we can take a uh, analog input along with this i will be showing another functionality called as serial monitor so in the tools you can see something called a serial monitor so the serial monitor function is used to uh, display some da data that uh, arduino will send to the pc 
and we can view it. So it is basically used as a method to uh, see some data that we are acquiring from the Arduino. Okay, so uh, in this experiment, I will be connecting a potentiometer to analog pin A0. I told you earlier that there are 16 analog pins out of which we uh, call the digital pins from 0 to 53. There are 54 pins, so 54 digital pins. So they will be named as 0 to 53, 0, 1, 2, 3 like that. So we already declared them as like pin mode 13, etc, etc. So when it comes to calling the name of uh, analog pins, we name it as A0, A1 up to uh, A15. Okay, there are 16 analog pins. Okay, so A0 to A15 makes 16 pins. So I will be taking data from one of the analog pins. I will be using this to control the brightness of an LED uh, that is connected to pin number 7, uh, which is one of the digital pin as well as the PWM pin. Okay, so we can control the brightness of LED. At the same time, I will be uh, using the serial monitor to print the value that we receive from the potentiometer. Okay, so when we receive some data or when we acquire some data from an analog pin in Arduino, the value range or the, we will be getting, uh, it has voltage only, right? So Arduino works at 0 to 5 volt. So when we uh, acquire any signal through an analog uh, pin, what we get is like a range from 0 to 0 to 1023. Okay, sorry. 0 to 1023. That means uh, actually there are 1024. Uh, okay, uh, 1024 values. So this is what? This 0 to 1023 value is equivalent to 0 to 5 volt. Uh, when it comes to voltage. Okay, so that is what we will be converting over here. So this value will be uh, the range that we are going to get from the analog input. Okay, and when it comes to a PWM output to control the brightness of the LED, the range is equivalent to 0 to 255. Okay, so the uh, resolution in input as well as output is different. So the when it comes to PWM output, it varies from 0 to 255. When it comes to analog input, it is from 0 to 1023. And the voltage corresponding to it all is 0 to 5 volts. So this is the basic understanding. Uh, when you go through some Arduino tutorials, you will be getting more idea about it. We need not discuss about this because our course is basically sensors and actuators. I am explaining this all to, uh, the, so that we can interface some sensors and show you how it works okay cool so uh, we will show do an exam example now okay i'm going to write an example uh, here so so you can see that i'm typing some function called as serial dot begin and in the bracket i had put 9600. So this is called the board rate or at the uh, rate at which the Arduino transfer data through to the laptop. Okay. So this is one of the minimum board rate that we can choose. There is 4800. You can see over here when we connect to the serial monitor which all options are here. See, there are 300, 1200, 2400, 4800, 9600. We can select any one of the rates. I am just selecting 9600 only. So I have typed the uh, serial communication. So once this function is being called, serial data will be uh, sent from Arduino to the PC and we can use it for multiple purposes. Okay. So that is there. Then I am going to uh, put another, one more thing. So I am going to uh, define one of the pins where we have connected to the, uh, connected the LED. So I am saying uh, pin mode. Okay, I am connecting uh, connecting the LED to the seventh pin, so I am putting it as output. So since an LED is an output, okay. Also, similarly, I am doing pin mode A zero where I have connected the this thing a uh, uh, potentiometer as input. Actually, we need not define A zero as input because uh, by default the analog pins are input only. But still, I am for clarity, I am putting this as input. Okay. Now, 
okay since we only need to start serial communication then make sure that the seventh pin is an output pin so that where we have connected the led all the commenting function and other things in c++ also works here so i am saying it's led and this is uh, potentiometer okay so in the void loop i am going to take the value from the uh, potentiometer and uh, control it uh, con and use it to control the brightness of the LED. Okay, so I am defining some integer x and I am going to store the value of the potentiometer into it. So I am going to use the function analog read. It uh, the uh, code in Arduino is case sensitive, so you have to take care which all letters to be capitalized and other things. You need practice to write it by hand. So, um, by, by practice it will all be clean. So, I am going to put, so, so this analog read function will, when uh, this function is being called, it will store the value um, of the potentiometer in the range of 0 to 1, 0 to 3 into this uh, integer x, okay. Now, as I have already said, uh, this integer value is in the range of 0 to 1023 now because analog read has a resolution of from 0 to 1023 okay and uh, when it comes to pwm output we only have a range of 0 to 255 which is uh, like 1 by 4th of the analog read resolution right so i am going to uh, say define another uh, value y and i am going to store this is equal to x by 4 I am just doing a mathematical function over here. We, I will show you another function also on the later stage. Okay. And I am doing is, what I am doing is like I am writing uh, analog write. Because now I am going to the, uh, y, for using the PWM uh, functionality of a digital pin, we have to use the analog write function. Okay. So I am going to say seventh pin comma y. So this means that if this y is 255, that means it's equivalent to a digital write 7 comma high. That means the LED will uh, blink or uh, glow at maximum brightness. And if the value y is 0, it's equivalent to low. So since this value zero, uh, y varies from 0 to 255 now, the brightness of the LED will also vary. Okay. So if I upload this code now, the LED will be uh, the brightness of the LED will be varying continuously uh, as we change the value of the potentiometer. But I am going to put some other function also here. Since I was telling you how to uh, print the value that we get uh, from the potentiometer directly. So I am going to print the value x over here so that uh, you will see how we can uh, display the value that we get also in the serial monitor. So I am now going to upload the code here. So um, I will show you how it will look when we change the value in the potentiometer in the serial monitor as well as how the brightness changes in the LED. Okay, I am going to upload this code. First we will uh, compile it to verify, yeah, so it is done compiling, so it is done, there is no error. So I am going to upload this code. So you can see this green progress bar. Okay, it's done uploading. Okay, now first uh, you can see on the left side the LED is blinking. That means the potentiometer is sending some value that is not equal to zero. Okay, uh, now I will show you the serial monitor. Under tools, I am showing going to show serial monitor. Okay, you can see some value over here, right? So this is the value of the potentiometer. Uh, in the range of 0 to 1023. Okay, when I am turning the uh, knob of the potentiometer now, see, like I am turning it in the clockwise direction, that means I am increasing the value of the port and you can see that the value being changing. Okay, that means the voltage is uh, increasing. So I am actually decreasing the uh, resistance in the potentiometer, so the voltage is increasing. You can see it is increasing. Another method, like here you can see the board rate that we have already chosen. Okay, another method of seeing this, since this is a waveform, 
and the twos we have something called serial plotter also. So you can see the scale over here. It is uh, the problem with the serial plotter is that uh, it will auto just the scale very much. So it's quite confusing. But you can see when I'm not turning the potentiometer, the value almost remains constant. The value from 80, 849 to 852, that's what it's in between. As you can think of, like say, uh, 0 to 1023 is approximate to around 1000 values and 5 volt is being divided into 1000 values, right? That is around like 0 0.005. So that much accurately you can measure the voltage or in terms of around 5 millivolt you are able to measure it. So that is the kind of accuracy that we are getting. Now if I am turning this thing, uh, turning the potentiometer, you can see the value being increasing, right? And also if I turn it the other way around, it will start decreasing. I will show another trick to stabilize this one. It's not a good method, but I will show you. At the same time, before that, you can see that the LED is brightness also is decreasing or increasing. So now I will start decreasing the brightness. So I'm turning the uh, potentiometer in anti-clockwise direction. So the value is being decreasing here also in the serial plotter. Slowly you can see the brightness of the LED also is going down. See the LED is almost dim now and it's off. So once it reached the zero value of the potentiometer, the LED went low. Now we are like increasing this thing. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, this is how it works. So I'm, if I just plot some other value also. This is just whatever I'm showing now is just to uh, just for you to understand this. So you know the value change from 0 to 1, 0 to 3. Okay. So if I plot this one. Okay. So I'm, I have added some other part of code over here, this much, to show you that, so here what we do is like we are just printing the value 1023 and 0 in the serial plotter along with x so that the scale won't change much. So you will understand very clearly. See, this is the 1023 line and this is a 0 line. So now when I change the value of the potentiometer, you can see it actually increasing. So it's not scaling. This is not a very recommended method, but I'm just showing that, um, showing this because the scale won't change now here. Okay. So if I turn in the anti-clockwise direction, it's going to reduce. This is how we take analog input and print it in a serial monitor or any of the functions. Instead of this y is equal to x by 4, I told you earlier, I can even do something else. I'm commenting that statement. And if I put the int y, is equal to map of this is another function that you can use here okay so i am putting map uh, so x is in the range of 0 to 1023 and i am going to scale it to the value of 0 to 255 so this is another function that we can use alternatively you will use this map function a lot of times when you do some complex program and other things so now the value y is map uh, mapped with respect to x in this range. So x is in the range of 0 to 1023 and you are going to map this value in terms of 0 to 255. It will show you the same results only. See, it's the same thing only. This is an alternative method. So if you do not know uh, the like it's, if it's not a easy conversion, then you can just use map function. So this is how you use, you take um, analog input from Arduino and uh, maybe use PWM over here. PWM to control a LED brightness. PWM is pulse, pulse width modulation. So you'll be learning more about it. So this PWM signals can be used to control the brightness of LED as simple as that. 
to even controlling the speed of motors and other devices and even in many of the sensors and other things we will know about it later and this is how we use serial monitor okay so this is the basic intro that you require when you use arduino okay so we will be interfacing arduino with different sensors from now and we will be using most of these functions and also some actuators there also you will be using these functions okay thank you